if I just own Wheaton now. Thank you, Mia. I, uh, I do have two very special guests here. As, uh, I'm very excited by this. Um, this is Ian Telfer of Wheaton River Minerals and Rob McEwen of Goldcorp. Ian Telfer of Goldcorp. As, of course, that's right, absolutely. That's right. I apologize. And uh, basically, uh, I had just finished reading uh, an article in Canadian Business Magazine that uh, called uh, your merger a, a contentious marriage. Why would someone call it, call it contentious? It was extremely harmonious. We rushed down the aisle, <laughs> ran past all the competition. <laughs> no, I'd agree with that. I, I think by contentious, they may have meant challenging uh, to, uh, to, to consummate, I guess is the right word or wrong word. But uh, yeah, no, I, so it's been a great marriage, just a great marriage. It's early days, though. <laughs> uh, but we, we've got the stock, the go-to stock in the industry. It's just bulletproof nope. balance sheet and low cost. And well, we were talking a little bit earlier, and I was saying, you know, this is really something because now you're number five in the world as a gold producer, but even more importantly, you're the lowest cost gold producer. I mean, that's really got to give you some clout. That's right. That's right. Our cash cost this year should be uh, approximately $60 US an ounce, and gold's trading at $435, so we've got the highest margins in the industry. And you've also got some money in the bank. Lots. Something approaching 600 US. That would million. pay my visa card off, almost. Would it? Yeah. So what are, what are the plans? I mean, I, you know, I'm not looking for any scoop here or really, anything, but what are the plans for that kind of cash? Will that be exploration? Will that be acquisitions? Will that be let's sit and wait? What, what do you think? Well, I'm only the chairman. This yes, is the CEO. Course, yes, He's the point. guy who has to talk. Yeah, good point. Yeah, no, well, certainly Wheaton's grown, or now the Gold Corp, but the Wheaton side of it had grown by acquisition over the past few years, and that's worked well for us. So I think you'll see us using some of that cash, or most of that cash, to grow by acquisition going mm -hmm. forward. Right. Now, th that's interesting that, I mean, you have different roles to play, and you have played his role in the past, whatever. How, do, how does it feel now to be in this, in this position? I mean, Very good. Very good. And we, we're on our next phase of development, and Gold Corp set to uh, outpace all the others now. <laughs> Those are fighting words. <laughs> is there something about the, between the two of you on a personal level? Is there, is there a, obviously there's a respect, I don't know, but uh, I mean, <clears throat> do you like each other's philosophies? Do you like each other's uh, way of going about business? Obviously you're not going to say no when you're in front of me, but... Uh, <clears throat> I mean, no, but I, I think the point is, you you know, for various reasons, you were both courted by different people, mm -hmm. and for different reasons, you said no, or it didn't happen. This time it did happen. Mm -hmm. There must have been something that was righter, more correct, or felt better. I think we, we both saw an opportunity to create a tremendous company by combining two strong companies and making one that was just a standout in the industry. And we... we we shared that view, and I think in terms of how to go at the market, we're very aligned in our thinking. And I would agree with that. Both of us had looked and been offered a lot of opportunities, right. but when we... Maybe against sort of, your will sometimes as well. Sometimes against our will, <laughs> exactly, but you know, we both looked at the universe of, of trying to grow the company, and then when the two companies were lined up, it was sort of shocking. You go, wow, what a great fit that is. Right. And so from that point, it was easy. As far as our personal relationship, we didn't know each other very well at the very beginning of this, but having spent three weeks uh, touring together around North America, selling the, selling the, selling the deal, uh, we got to know each other very well, and uh, we, we, we had a fabulous time. We really did. We, we had many things in common philosophically, business-wise and personnel-wise and strat strategically, and so uh, it, was a, it was a really fun experience as we got to know each other better. and, and, and it was one of these things that the more time we spent together and the more time we spent working on the uh, on the merger, the better and the better and the better that everything got. It really did. It really did. And I think people could sense that in interviews like this. Yeah, that's no, what they've told us. And, and Absolutely. I mean, I can just imagine those traveling road shows with the PowerPoint presentation and everything, and all of a sudden you get a couple of people up there who've got track records but have got the passion. Mm -hmm. and, and you can tell. I mean, I can interview people, I look in their eyes. I know when, the, when that's not the real real story. Yep. You see it in yep. your eyes. Yep. Yep. So, so what's ahead? Well, uh, as I said, we'd like to continue growing the company. Uh, we've, we've got this, uh, this hoard of cash and uh, we've got some ideas and there are some opportunities mm -hmm. and uh, we're both very bullish on the gold price over the next few years. Yep. And uh, so you'll likely see us make a few acquisitions here to continue to grow. Um, it's, it's great times for miners right great now. Time. You know, and great it, times. Uh, it, you know, it, it kind of goes up and down, but uh, there are certain things that are in place that seem to indicate 
this could uh, this could go on for a while. I mean, you hear that every time, of course. <laughs> but uh, I mean, the demand in China is, yeah. is spectacular, and India is not far behind. Do you do you think that uh, that we could look for for a, a, a good stretch run here? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll speak first. Uh, yes, I, I, you always hesitate to say this time it's different. Of course. But, uh, but I think we are in for uh, you know, a prolonged period of, in, of rising commodity prices and gold will just be one of those commodities. And it'll be partly due to the U.S. dollar, but I think it'll be a lot to growth in the economy in Asia, India, and China. So I think it'll go for a while, uh, and, uh, you know, but Rob's the expert on gold, you should ask, get his view. I think over the next five, six years, we're going to see gold test $850 an ounce. So really? We'll have a double, triple, quadruple in the share prices from here. Well, that's a pretty bold statement. I mean, your track record is very impressive. It's not like some nobody on the street has just mentioned that. That's really interesting. What, we've uh, seen two cycles in the last 108 years, and we've enter, entered the third in 01. Uh, and they'll tend to be about 12 years long. Now, are you just... And I sh I'm sorry, I'm a little short on my research. I've done a little bit of research, but are you just gold miners? Well, at the present time, Rob was 100% gold. Uh, Wheaton was 60 to 70% gold. With the two companies together now, we're over 80% gold. So yes, we are gold miners. Does it help to be just in, in, in one, one, looking for one mineral? Like, is that an expertise, or can that be expanded into other areas, or would you even want to? The investment community prefers single commodity stories. If you're a money manager and you decide nickel's going to go up, you want to buy a nickel play. If you think it's copper's going up, you want to buy a copper play. And if you think gold's going up, you want to buy a gold play. Sure. The companies that have right. many metals, they don't they don't have the same leverage because to the they, commodity They could be price. up, a, one part of their business could be up, exactly. the other part would drag it down. Exactly. So you can't, exactly. you can't right. see how you're going to... Uh, See the stock price. That's right. Something. That's right. Now, a, a bit of the story about you convincing the shareholders to accept this offer. You must have done something pretty remarkable, or certainly something compelling. It was a very simple story. We just had to show them that there was there was more value in the combination of Gold Corp and Wheaton, less risk, and more relevant management. And we would walk into sessions with the institutional investors, and they'd say, "We're voting for Glamis." Right. Within an hour. We'd walk out and they'd say, we're voting with you. Thanks for coming in. And the value story was so strong, they could see it almost immediately. All right. And how did you present the value story? What did you show It was a, you know, a PowerPoint flip chart. And I guess I went and I, was, I have $100 million invested in Gold Court personally. And I said, <laughs> if... Um, That's a if, compelling story. If, if Glamis were to win, I've got a sell ticket immediately. But with Wheaton, I saw double, triple, quadruple coming, and you're buying real value. So my money was there to stay for the cycle. And I mean, if the other scenario had played out, you still weren't going to be hurt too badly. Maybe your feelings, but <laughs> I would be liquid. I'd be walking and look. I'd be looking to invest in Wheaton, probably. <laughs> the other part of the you story you might have made a big mistake here. <laughs> the other part of the story that was very compelling is, you know. Prior to being in the gold mining business, Rob was a money manager. Right. So he could right. sit across the table from these shareholders and say, look, let's talk as investors. I was a money manager. You're a money manager. I've got $100 million on the table. You've only got 50. And let me tell you why I'm staying with my 100 on the table. And this is a, there's no other CEO in the mining business that can make those kinds of statements. Right. They don't have the same background as Rob, and they don't have as much money in the, in the game as Rob. And so that was very, very powerful. I, I've had a chance to talk to some financial people, some analysts and whatever, and they all talk about team, which is, you know, everybody talks about team, but they talk about track record. Mm -hmm. I mean, the track record of you two is impeccable. We both created value for shareholders different ways. Rob discovered it and I bought it, but they both worked out very well for our shareholders. And, and I guess that, that probably says as much as you can possibly say about why this will be an incredible marriage. It should be. You know, because you just... Um, it's just, it, it makes a lot of sense. Yep. Thank you very, very much. Our thank pleasure. you very, very much. Thank Already. You. Ian, thank you. Appreciate it. I really enjoyed this. Thank you very much. Take it was care. great. And uh, thank you for being on ID and RTV because it was great to carry your story uh, further. So thank you very much. And uh, I'm sure there'll be lots more news ahead. I hope so. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Take okay, care. we're back to Whoops. Mia.
All right, thanks, Rick. Okay, I'm here now with Don Moore. He's the president of Rupert Resources. Thanks for joining us. Now, Rupert Resources, we just spoke to Goldcorp. Rupert Resources is right next to Goldcorp. And what can you